Hi students, welcome to yet another session of my class. We are discussing linguistics and structure of English language. We are going to discuss about a new topic, the American Structuralist and Bloomfield. Let us discuss in detail. We all are very familiar with the term structuralism, am I right? Yes, that is you already studied in your theory paper, etc. Yes. The term structuralism is used in many contexts in different disciplines in the 20th century. And structuralism proposes the idea that many phenomena do not occur in isolation, but instead occur in relation to each other. And that all related phenomena are part of a whole with a definite but not necessarily defined structure. While Structuralism in its narrower sense refers to Ferdinand de Saussure's linguistics or linguistic theories. Am I right? Yes. In its narrower sense, it refers to Saussure's structuralist theories. In its broader sense, it is an umbrella term for approaches or uh, different disciplines in anthropology, ethnology, sociology, psychology, etc. Here we are going to discuss American structuralism. What do you mean by this term or how can we define this term American structuralism and what is the role of Bloomfield in American structuralism? Leonel Bloomfield was an American linguist whose influence dominated the development of structural linguists in America between the 1930s and the 1950s. Bloomfield's approach to linguistics was characterized by its emphasis on the scientific basis of linguistics, close adherence to behaviorism, and emphasis on formal procedures for the analysis of linguistic data. Yes, Bloomfield's approach to linguistics was characterized by three factors. Which are the three factors? One is emphasis on the scientific basis of linguistics. That is the scientific part of the linguistics. And the second one is close adherence to behavioristic approach or behaviorist theory and the last one is emphasis on formal procedures for the analysis of linguistic data so his approach to linguistics was characterized by these three factors some of the most important influences on linguistics in the earlier part of the 20th century came from fields such as anthropology and psychology anthropological studies of tribes such as American Indians or Red Indians revealed the existence of languages with the elaborate sound systems. Yes, anthropological studies of certain tribes such as Amer the American Indians or Red Indians, they revealed the existence of language with the elaborate sound systems. This also focused attention on the structures of word formation and morphology in different languages. The American anthropologists, that is Bose and Sapper, gave a comprehensive description of American Indian languages, such as the languages of the Alokonian family. Their concern was also with the significance of language in human thought and culture. This Alonian family, their concern was with the significance of language in human thought and culture and the fundamental link between language and culture. Yes, they gave much emphasis to the human thought and culture as well as the fundamental link between language and culture. Language can be described as observable and concrete. Next point. Language can be observed as observe, uh, described as observable and concrete. That means 
sounds can be observed as they are concrete physiological activities these sounds can be described or identified as concrete physiological activities leading to the production of sound waves but meanings are abstract and cannot be observed but meanings are abstract and they cannot be observed this belief was based on the behaviorist school of psychology this concrete sound system and the abstract meaning system that meanings are abstract and cannot be observed this belief was based on behaviorist school of psychology according to which only that mental process which is manifest in behavior can be scientifically observed that is that cognition or understanding or that mental process which is manifest in behavior that can be scientifically observed and can become the basis of valid scientific conclusions that is the behaviorist approach once again i repeat that is behaviorist school of psychology emphasizes mental process which is manifest in behavior that can be scientifically observed and can become the basis of valid scientific conclusion since language is also a form of behavior its external aspect what is its external aspect language is considered when we consider language as a behavior that is since language is also a form of behavior its external aspect is its speech so external aspect that is speech is the focus of linguistic description these influences were instrumental in the growth of american structuralism in the first half of the 20th century then Bloomfield in his seminal book language yes language is one of the famous books that were, that was written by bloomfield his uh, very famous book language in that particular book he defines and delimits the area of linguistic inquiry in that particular book he defines and delimits the area of linguistic inquiry he rejects the universalist ideas about language in that particular book he rejects all the existing universalist ideas regarding language on the basis that each individual language has its classes and categories therefore according to him the only useful generalizations about language are inductive generalizations rather than deductive generalizations inductive in the sense that is particular to general deductive means general to particular so he believed in or he emphasized the inductive generalizations in language the only useful generalizations about language are inductive generalizations yes then applying the behaviorist approach Bloomfield explains language as a pattern of stimulus and response. Yes, this American structuralist they applied or Bloomfield applied behaviorist approach to language. So in the previous class, when we discussed about the break linguist, they they applied what that is Saussure's concept of phonology. and they consider both the structural and functional aspect of language that is the grammatical part also here in american structuralism these american structuralists as well as bloomfield they applied this behaviorist approach to language that is the difference so applying the behaviorist approach actually this behaviorist theory was put forward by b of skinner and he adopted this bloomfield he adopted that behaviorist approach and he applied that 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 in language so applying the behaviorist approach bloomfield explains language as a pattern of stimulus and response so we can 
uh, intimate it as capital S R relationship. That is stimulus relationship. Language as the pattern of stimulus and response. Behaviorist theory of learning is based on the idea that all behaviors are occurred through interaction with the environment. That is the basic idea embedded in behaviorist approach. That is, behaviorist theory of learning is based on the idea that all behaviors, like they concern language itself is a behavior. So all behaviors are occurred through interaction with the environment. And moreover, he posits a situation where there is a stimulus from the external world and he, we can note this stimulus as capital S, which gives rise to an actual response in the form of an action and we can intimate it as capital letter R. So there is a stimulus response relationship. Let us explain with the help of one example. If a person is hungry, and sees an apple. This apple is the stimulus. If he takes the apple and eats it, this is a response. But instead of performing an action, he utters some sounds such as I am hungry, bring me that apple. This is a speech response. And we can intimate the speech response by small r. To the stimulus, capital letter S. Yes. To the stimulus of what? To the stimulus of hungry. Stimulus of hunger. So here establish one relationship that capital S, that stimulus and the speech response small r. So capital letter S yes and the small r relationship. This in turn may become a speech stimulus. Speech stimulus can be intimate by small s for the other person, the hearer, who may then respond either with an actual action of getting the apple as response, capital letter R, or a speech act, small letter R. So, therefore, the pattern will be here, yes, the pattern will be small s capital R relation or cap small letter S, yes, small letter R relationship. That is speech stimulus response relation or speech stimulus speech act response, the relationship. Here, speech stimuli are substitute stimuli and the speech responses are substitute responses. Afterwards, Bloomfield focused on the psychology, physiological and acoustic characteristics of the speech act. Acoustic in the sense means relating to sound or sense of hearing etc. So, he gave much emphasis to physiological and acoustic characteristics of the speech act showing that it is verbal behavior following a pattern of the stimulus and response yes here language he considers itself as a behavior and it is a verbal behavior following a pattern of the stimulus and response leading to habit formation through a repetition and imitation yes bloomfield focused on the physiological and the acoustic characteristics of the speech act then bloomfield did not address the larger questions of language and culture his concerns were micro aimed at defining fundamental concepts such as phoneme this is the basic uh, smallest uh, uh, basic sound unit then allophone more morphine allomorph that is he did not address the larger questions of language and culture and he only considers or his concerns were micro that is such as phoneme allophone more morpheme and allomorph these definitions are based on the notion of distinctive features 
In a lucid expository style, Bloomfield gives an explanation of methodology and processes of word formation, such as affixation and compounding and in an analytic account of sentence structure, etc. So he gave the concept of immediate constituents, according to which a sentence can be broken up into its constituent parts. So from all these definitions, some we can uh, notice some limitations of Bloomfield's approach. In short, we can say that it is a purely mechanistic explanation and does not take into account the creativity and the variability of languages. It is purely a mechanistic explanation and it did not take into account the creativity and other variability of language. He did not address the larger questions of language. He just considered the fundamental concepts of language. So, in short, let us conclude this topic by saying that this Leonard Bloomfield is known for applying the principles of behaviorist psychology to a linguistics defining the meaning of a linguistic form as the situation in which the speaker utters it and the response it calls forth in the hearer and he adopted the behaviorist theory of semantics according to which meaning is simply the relationship between a stimulus and a verbal response and moreover, conception of language does not allow for any kind of concept or mental image, but only sets of stimuli and responses that occur in certain situation. Dear students, I think all of you understand this session that is the American structuralist and Bloomfield. That is their approach to language, this theory, etc. There is a homework for you and the homework is write a note on the American Structuralist and Bloomfield. Write your homework and send back to me. Thank you. Have a, have a nice day. See you again.